This TSB television broadcast is supported by Banneker Realty, making dreams happen. One more game in the Friday slate at the Twin Cities Thanksgiving tip-off, and it is a doozy. The defending 3A state champions, the De La Salle Islanders, kick off their season and their title defense against one of the best teams from Iowa and one of the best players in Iowa, the Dowling Catholic Maroons. Greetings, everyone. I'm Mike Pete, and Emil Jihad will join me in a moment. De La Salle, they won a state title kind of came out of the shadows. They had a lot of injuries at the start of the year, worked their way back to full health, and returned to prominence in the state tournament, knocking off Becker. They bring a loaded lineup. Nor Francois not playing this year, at least not to start, working through some issues. De La Salle hopes to have her back, but they bring a loaded squad. Nurje Weems, a potential Division I commit. Savannah White. Royce White's sister had a tremendous freshman season. Maya Williams, Sydney Runsway, Keani Lockett. And off the bench, they've got a lot of options as well. This De La Salle team, they are a stingy defensive group, and that's going to pose a lot of trouble for the Dowling Catholic Maroons, potentially. But Dowling Catholic, no slouch. They've been in this event for the last several years. You may recall Caitlin Clark put on a show. Clark heading to Iowa. This will be the first full game for the Maroons. Their first game of the season was suspended because the gym they played in suffered a power outage in the second quarter. So the game was suspended. So for both teams, this is officially their season opener. So a lot of questions to answer. That being said, De La Salle, a front runner in the Class 3A state championship. And Dowling Catholic, one of the teams to watch from Iowa. A great way to wrap up the Friday session here at the Twin Cities Thanksgiving tip-off. We'll bring you the game in a moment. Twin City Sports Broadcasting, and a whole lot more. That's what you get from TSB Television. We provide long-lasting digital coverage of your favorite athletes from the preps to the pros. Dazzling moves. Holloman, good if it goes. Yes! Game winners. James. She's in trouble. Finds James. Toss shot! It goes in! And everything in between. Before we let you go, do you want to say hi to anybody? Oh. Oh, I don't know. That put me on the spot there. If you want to connect with our audience, visit us at patreon.com slash TSB television or sponsor our coverage through PayPal and Cash App. Thank you for watching. Mike Peden and Emil Jihad back with you. Emil, we're in for a show here. De La Salle and Dowling Catholic. Season opener for both teams, the defending 3A champs, Dowling with one of the best players in the state of Iowa, USA Junior National Experience. She was a teammate of Paige Beckers on the USA circuit. Uh, I don't know what more we can say. It's what the people want, Mike. They want to see a good matchup. And from what I understand, uh, Dowling's going to bring some heat. They'll get after it. They'll be well coached. And I know De La Salle's going to bring the heat. Hometown favorite. Number 23 is sophomore Emma Kimball. De La Salle Number 31 had been a power for several years. It wasn't that long ago where Faye Johnson Patterson took the team to a three-peat in Class 3A. They went through a transition. Tanisha Scott was at Minneapolis South, but she was a graduate of De La Salle, wanted to come home. And when she took over the De La Salle job, she told me back then, I didn't want to bring my sisters with. I wanted to build it up on my own, and look what she's done. And that has to be cool for a De La Salle graduate to come back and win a title at the school you were a part of for so long. And finally, for the Islanders, number 22, a senior... 
And De La Salle bringing in a couple of new faces to the team. Let's take a look at the starting five. Dowling Catholic, the visitors. Ella McVeigh. Caitlin Clark. Number 23, Emma Gipple. Number 31, Grace Gaber. And number 55, Lexi Bowles. The Islanders will start. Number two, Savannah White. Kennedy Flick, number three. She transferred from Maranatha. Keani Lockett, number 11. Sydney Runsway, number 15. And Nerje Weems, number 22. And even though she doesn't start, keep an eye out for Maya Williams. The Steel Sal team, they've got youth talent. They've got it all. And I see both Francoise are here to cheer on the Islanders. Again, Nora not playing for now for personal reasons, and we certainly hope whatever she's dealing with, she can overcome. But as Tanisha Scott and I noted earlier this afternoon, you know, you'd love to have her play, but for now, it just means someone else will take, it, take over and contribute to this team. She's not shy about the depth she has on this team. And we're underway. Kristen Meyer, the head coach for Dowling Catholic. Denisha Scott, the head coach for De La Salle. The Islanders wearing the black, the Maroons wearing the white. Final game of the Friday session here at St. Thomas. Nerje Weems gets her own rebound. Goes up on Bowles and will shoot two. Unbelievable, but we are off and going. 17-43, and De La Salle breaks the goose egg. De La Salle, number one nice team shot. in the 3A poll. Nerje Weems, the younger sister of McKeel Weems, who went to Tartan. Nerje likes to produce videos on YouTube, and that's a foul on Bulls. So the two post players for De La Salle pick up a quick foul in the first 30 seconds. Lexi Bulls to the line. Again, the season opener for both teams. De La Salle opted not to play in any tip-off event in opening week, and Dowling Catholic could not complete their first game. They're still trying to figure out what to do about that situation. Two to one in the early going. There's a Weems up on Bowles and nice rebound. that's Savannah White, the younger sister of Royce White. Runs away for three, off the heel. Royce White, an outstanding high school player at Hopkins. Oh, nice move. And look, got one open. We got a look. And there's Keani Lockett. Emil, you remember this. We saw her in seventh grade at, at Minneapolis South when, when they went up against Stillwater. She looked pretty small back then, but she's grown up a lot since then, physically and mentally. More free throws coming, and that's two quick fouls on Lexi Bowles. There's a Weems to the line. Looks like they got some size ready to go, though. Nerje has some D1 schools taking a look at her. I told Purdue is a school that's expressing interest. And Bowles is going to have to come out quickly. And right off the bench comes Nayak Tayon. Tuang, I believe is how you pronounce yeah. it. Senior. Yes. Naya Tuang for short, and it looks like we have some debris on the Steve Fritz court here at Shanaker Arena. This is the second incarnation. You alluded to this back at the Eastview Aquinas game. This facility was renovated several years ago. Reopened about four or five years ago. It looks a lot sleeker than it did in the first incarnation. Three on the way for Caitlin Clark. I That is Caitlin Clark, yes. And Clark knocks it down. There's a Weems. Can't get around Twong. Savannah White's there. 
No good, and the rebound going to the Maroons. Emma Gipple. Clark, blocked. It's a nice block. That is Kennedy Click, the 5'11 freshman. Started her varsity career at Maranatha Christian Academy. Transferred over the summer. The school went through a, a big transition with coaching and AD. Caitlin Clark stepped back three off the heel. Kennedy Click with the rebound. Savannah White almost lost it. Lock it. Step back three. Almost. Maroons in transition. Savannah White with the rejection. She seems kind of lackadaisical. I mean, almost like she's just going to have speed. I mean, if she really locks White. in, yeah, if she locks in, I think she can be a difference maker. Well, she got a big block there. She's so athletic. I mean, you can tell the genes are there, but she doesn't appear to me to be locked in. She's just kind of going half speed. Well, it's early. Maybe trying to get a feel for it. We've got a foul. I believe. I really like Lockett. She's going hard. Okay. But you got to get all, all five going hard, and then it gets to be contagious. Kennedy Click called for the foul there. They don't keep fouls on the board. Grace Gaber. Back to Caitlin Clark. A teammate of Paige Beckers on the USA Junior National Circuit. Oh, Twong that's a nice rebound. rebound. White. Bounce pass to Weems. Works her way through Twong and scores. Nurse is her name, but she goes by NJ. And the mid-range day drops for Dowling Catholic. That is number one, Ella McVeigh. Oh, nice pass. And Weems one. goes up. That's a nice pass. And Weems has drawn three fouls just on post-ups. I don't know if that's a stat you keep per se, but that's a good start for Weems. It, it, of course, it's great to score, but if you're drawing fouls the way Weems has, one thing's for sure, NJ's not afraid to show her physicality. As we noted, the younger sister of McKeel Weems, who finished his high school career at Tartan. Weems split at the line, though. Three on the way. That doesn't drop. Just looking for somebody just to scrap a little bit harder for DeLaSalle. They kind of got it in neutral. Um, their trademark has just been all over the place defensively, and I, I have not seen that yet. So I'm going to have to have a little talk with my daughter afterwards. Sadika Jihad, part of the coaching staff at DeLaSalle. And that group, we all talk about chemistry on the floor. The coaching staff, they've stuck together for years. Kennedy Click. The southpaw missing the three, and we're going to have a foul going the other way. On Runsway, it looks like. No, Weems. And that's her second. So she's going to have to go out. But she can't do it just yet. So both the starting post players have two fouls. Weems gets the steal off the errant pass. She's going to go up against Twan, come up short. And Weems got to be careful here. You don't want to pick up that third foul. Caitlin Clark, two on two, blows by Lockett. And Keani fouls her. Whoa. Or did she? <laughs> the ref from half court calls it. <laughs> the ref that was a half foot away, he <laughs> got that ball going out. Holy buckets. It's got to have x ray vision. They call the foul on click. So it must have happened away from, I thought it was Lockett. So Click picks up her second personal foul. So De La Salle gonna have to make some major substitutions. Caitlin Clark at the line. Knocks down the front end. Isabella Thomas on the floor for the Islanders.
Clark knocks down both free throws. White, the skip to click. Fires, and rattles it in. Kennedy click. Caitlin Clark drives, banks it off the glass. Clark is solid, she knows what she's doing. She's been doing it for years. Keani Lockett oh, nice to pass. Thomas. Out of control, but Thomas recovers in time. <laughs> the ref is very generous tonight. Etiana Salam on the floor for the Islanders, number 13, and that's going to be a foul on White. Dowling Catholic, one of the regular visitors at the Twin Cities Thanksgiving tip-off. She's solid. Eight points already for Caitlin Clark, and remember, she has USA Junior National experience, so she got to go all alongside Paige Beckers for those youth tournaments. You know, the two have supported each other on that journey. Caitlin Clark, you'll see her in the Big Ten at Iowa next year. Twong is hit with a foul following the rebound attempt. And finishing up on De La Salle, we said chemistry goes a long way. You know, the players have gotten used to each other for a while, but the coaching staff, Tanisha Scott, Ashley ellis Milan, Daniel Ellison, Sadika Jihad, they've been together for the last several years. Maya Williams lost it. Yeah, they had her wide open the first time. They just didn't give it to her. Maroon's looking to go in transition. Three on the way. And that goes off the backboard. That's Julia Moore, number 21. Here is Williams. Tried to get around Bulls, couldn't do it. Lexi with the two fouls. And there's her third. Well, once again, the official in the backcourt had to call it. You know what? I, I tell you what. Guy on the baseline who's working the baseline there, shorter gentleman, the official, he likes it rough. You know, when I was a young man, I used to like it rough. <laughs> At Minneapolis North, well, you played in the early 80s. I'm guessing you probably were there after Ben Coleman left. For Harlan Hill, Jay Rundles, Robert Smith, Rundles, Ricky Hicks. Was that Cameron's father? Cameron Rundles, a dealer No. No? Okay. No, no relation. Okay. I think maybe a distant cousin. All right. Jay Rundles is an all-star, one of a kind, all-city guy. I'll have to take your word like for it. 6'5 forward, he could jump out of the gym. I'll have to take your word for it. I wasn't around back then. Uh, some good teams. Well, North, they fielded a lot of good oh, teams. Oh, what the a huge steal. Nice. One hand pass. Oh, you got to turn and go. A Lock break it, for the Islanders. It. Break for the Islanders after they missed at the line. Lockett was thinking about the three. Oh, Sees nice. a lane instead and scores. I like Lockett. Lockett. She's got speed, she's quick. Lockett recovered from a knee injury last year, missed the start of the season. Nobody getting the hand up. And that was the big surprise about De La Salle State Tournament win. It wasn't necessarily expected. Got to get a hand up, contest shooters. Get it out, get it out, get it out. We missed her. Here comes Lockett. Oh, stop and go, Hezzy. Bounce pass over to Runsway for three. No good. Rebound. Oh, you got Williams. Kennedy Click will finish it. And Dallin Catholic will call a timeout. That wasn't the most efficient possession for the Islanders, but that play benefits the importance of having a trailer. You saw number 23, I should say. That wasn't Maya Williams. That was Maya Williams, yes. 
It's hard when you cover four games in one day and have all these numbers, but Maya Williams didn't get the layup. She got the O board, missed it, but Kennedy Click was there on the other side. De La Salle had everything covered, and 12 hole for it. And we've got ourselves a tight game. The thing that's nice here is uh, coaches are making adjustments as we go. Uh, definitely in for a good battle here. But uh, I like how Dowling is making the simple adjustments. De La Salle's not going to back off. Well, and you're talking about some of the history at Minneapolis North. Tanisha Scott at De La Salle, one of her teammates was uh, Rashida McKenzie. Larry McKenzie's daughter. Yep. And the two know each other very well. I remember Larry and I called the North De La Salle game, and Larry and Tanisha were chatting it up. It's an extended family, this basketball community is, and they all chat with each other. They support each other. Tanisha has won oh, a lot of respect. Oh, you got to take that charge. Like I said, my friend is baseline. He's letting a lot of this go, which is good. Letting him play a little bit. That's going to fall into De La Salle's hands if he lets him play. Well, they do get the turnover out of it off that block by Williams. Runs away, can't finish the play. And there's a reach and foul on Lockett. Both teams out of fouls to give here with 11.39 to go. Got to love Tanisha Scott. Riverboat gambler mentality. Kind of letting it fly. Whoa! Another loose one. Number 15 didn't grab it. She just looked at it. Oh! Break for the Maroons. Gaber out to Clark. Deep three. No good. Rebound click. I like her. She's solid. Kennedy. Oh. Got to turn around. Take the charge this time. Caitlin Clark one on one. Puts Williams on the spin cycle. Extra rinse. Caitlin Clark up to 10. She has 10 points. The rest of the team has 14. White, the skip to click. White, you got to challenge that. You got to challenge that. Tries to lead it into Williams, but a lot of traffic down there. Gable gets the steal. The Maroons can't finish it. Someone's headband came off. Click. Swish. I'm sure she's heard this more than once, but things are clicking for Kennedy Click, who has six, and I will show myself out. She's the turn. And then she she's commits a foul. She's just a little slow foot, but she can play. So Click in early foul trouble, and Caitlin Clark going to the line. This I'm still was waiting the for uh, Savannah to step it up and do a little something here. I'm well, thinking that she's going to be they've got the athletes. doing a little bit more. Yeah. Remember, though, this is their first game, so yeah, they've but had she's a, week a returning to player. She's got to know where she fits in and know, understand her role and know what Coach Scott is asking of her. Well, historically speaking, De La Salle, they're a team that gets stronger as the season moves along. That being said, they schedule tough. In state, they're going to play Hopkins, St. Michael, Albertville, Mankato West. And then you've got the doubleheader rivalry series with Creighton Durham Hall and Minnehaha Academy. Clark up to 12 points, 16 15. Dallin Catholic over De La Salle. Maya Williams. Call for the offensive foul. Led with the elbow, it looked like from here. And Caitlin Clark draws it, the foul there. I right, just said side out. I don't think he called a foul on that. Just okay, baseline. just a side out. You were right, it was a side out. It, oh. I thought it was going to be a foul, but. Click is uh, getting their hands on a lot of balls. Where's the help side? De La Salle back to their zone, looks like. And a five second call. So Savannah White. I got to get this guy's name, I, I love him. As an official, <laughs> I want him over at Edison calling some games. <laughs> some of his calls are just great. A lot of good no calls. Williams from the key. Salam. 
Whoa. Can't roll it in. Rebound Clark. Clark steps into a three. Off the heel. Salam with the board. Tried to find Click on the run out. Instead, it goes to Clark. And now she'll oh, dish it off. Pass. And Dowling Catholic leaves it short. One on one. Click and Gaber. Click. Gaber stayed with her. Oh, you gotta get on the floor. And it's turning into an NFL scrum. De La Salle ball on the possession arrow. And Tanisha Scott, you were speaking about her earlier, uh, spoke highly of Faye Johnson Patterson, who she replaced at De La Salle. And that's not easy, even though De La Salle's her alma mater. You go in taking over for the most legendary, well, one of the most legendary coaches in the state as Caitlin Clark misses the long two. I know high school ball isn't quite the same as college and the pros, but it's not easy taking over for Vade Johnson Patterson, but Tanisha Scott has done a terrific job. Gaber will be called for the foul. Williams will shoot two. Faith won eight state tournament titles, five at Minneapolis North, three at De La Salle. Tanisha, uh, she's got seven to go if she wants to match Faith Johnson Patterson, but you know, one of the most respectful figures I've met as Maya Williams tries to hit the free throws, missing the front end. And excited to watch her daughter grow up. Williams missing both. De La Salle, three of six. Three of eight, I should say. Dowling Catholic, seven of eight, and an offensive foul. 8.36 remaining in the first half. 16-15, this has been a Rough and tough, grinding kind of game. I gotta deny that. It's just amazing because White is just so athletic. She's got to be taking some of those balls away. Gaber, top of the key. Dishes off to Twong. Didn't get the position she wanted. It stays with the Maroons. Here's Gipple. Clark not on the floor right now. Big chance for the Islanders. And Keani Lockett gets in there for the tie-up. It stays Dowling Catholic ball. But with K Caitlin Clark on the bench for now, this is a prime opportunity for the Islanders to take advantage. Twong, fouled by White. Twong gets the front end to drop. And Click will go back in. Uh, this De La Salle team, it's, they're deep for a 3A squad. White out to Weems. Posts up on Twong and scores. And De La Salle, they've been missing that for a while. Weems, the one player able to find some rhythm for the Islanders. Wide open three is pure. Grace Gaber gets on the board. Lock it. Turning on the Jets. Lockett reaches in, gets the steal. Dishes to Weems. Can she recover in time? No. And then a foul. Got to finish that. They have uh, at least four or five missed layups. Well, and Weems mishandled the pass there ever so briefly. And she'll be called for the foul, so she'll have to go to the bench for a while. Is that her second? I think that's her third. So De La Salle having to navigate foul trouble here. It's
It is the first game of the season for the Islanders, and even though they had an extra week to practice, I often say this, that first game you're usually dealing with those opening day jitters because you don't get a preseason. De La Salle did have a scrimmage with Maranatha and Stillwater, but the scrimmage isn't the same as a game. Tuong splits at the line, gets her rebound though. Three on the way. Looks long as it is. Here's Keani Lockett again. She's showcasing a lot of speed. Oh, White had an opening. Williams goes inside too strong. De La Salle struggling down low. Tuong, the skip. Gable for three. Yes! Grace Gaber with a graceful stroke. And the Maroons with their largest lead of the game, 25-19. Lock it. Blows by her defender. But can't finish the play. Once again, De La Salle unable to convert down low. Islanders, I should say Maroons go high low. Tuan can't finish, and then she fouls Maya Williams. De La Salle going to the line for free throws. Like I said, I really like Lockett. Um, just think, uh, you know, it's early on in the year, like you had mentioned. Um, some of the De La Salle kids are kind of coasting. They're not going all out. Um, you know, it's early, Mike. It's game one, and this Islanders team, as we said, they get stronger as the season moves along. They've reached the state tournament every year for the last three years. Won it all in 2019, beating Becker. And holding Becker without a field goal, or a point, I believe, in the last four minutes of that 3A state championship, Caitlin Clark, a little razzle-dazzle, but she can't finish the play. Oh, dangerous pass. De La Salle able to hang on to it, but you're right. That could have been disastrous. White fires the three, and that's short. She is so athletic. I'd be going to the basket every time I get it. We've seen that. I saw that out of her last year when De La Salle ran the floor. And Minnie Haha, Caitlin Clark goes up on White. And she'll have a chance at three. Caitlin Clark, not to be messed with. another uh, strange call. And the Maroons with a 28-19 lead, and now we've got a blocking foul on Julia Moore. Well, you got to even it out. The other ref called the tic-tac foul, so they didn't call there a block you go. here. Maybe a makeup. Free throws for Keani Lockett. As I was saying earlier, you remember we did Minneapolis South Stillwater when she was in seventh grade, hadn't grown into her body yet, and she looked real small out there. She, um... Found she, her growth um, spurt, though, since that time. As a sophomore now, she's looking pretty good. <laughs> Kennedy Bean. Oh my God. Run Sui. Tell you that pressure breaks pipes, Mike. Pressure, pressure, pressure. A lot of pressure. 28-19 our score. Got to capitalize now. Five thirty-five. De La Salle. They've had their chances, but they've been unable to convert down low. And, and now Iowa you've got Dowling has no post in the game. You've got to finish here. And more free throws coming on the reach-in foul by number 15. Make Simplot. Oh. 
Williams converts her first one. One left. We're having a discussion here at the scores table. Do you know what's going on, Emil? It's a little break in the action. I think we have blood on Maya Williams' shooting hand, so the ref uh, is calling the ref timeout. So and she's the one at the line, to, uh, right? Yeah, and so, so the trainer's on the floor up. here and allowing them to uh, tape up her hand. Got to get that taken care of. Blood, of course, a safety issue. Maya got on the board, by the way, with that free throw. De La Salle, they've struggled at the free throw line. <laughs> the announcer having a little fun with the situation. Uh, just a little scrape that happens sometimes at this level. De La Salle, 4 of 10 at the line. Dowling Catholic, 11 of 13. And you look at this eight-point margin, that's one of the factors. Clark. That's way hesitation. too easy. That's way too easy. You might want to put Lockett on her. There's Lockett, and she's fouled by Julia Moore. Both teams in the double bonus. Uh, we might be here a while, Emil. I believe we've got a few more stories to share. <laughs> well, we might need them. Free throw shooting contest here. Five minutes left in the first half. Lockett gets the front end to drop. Lockett is looking good here, first half. Very solid. Lockett also plays volleyball for the Islanders, and she likes to bake. So we've got a chef among the ranks at De La Salle. Lockett knocks down both free throws. You got to double it. Good. Good, now push. Oh, you gotta push it. Thomas with the rebound there. Lock it, out to Salam. Long skip to Runsway for three. No good. Caitlin Clark. That's the one you wanna trap there. Trapping her is no small feat. Highly elusive, athletic, mobile. Oh. Ella McVeigh almost got the steal there. I like number one. <laughs> it's all over the place. McVeigh, well, De La Salle, I should say Dallin Catholic, they have some good players. Kitlin Clark getting most of the attention here because she <laughs> is scoring a bunch, 17 points. One has been all over it. She's a, defensively, she's right there. Causing a lot of problems. Swing the ball, sweetheart. Don't hold it. Thomas. A little indecisive here. Finds indecisive click. people cause accidents. De La Salle, they look a little unsure. You're right. So they go back to Lockett to reset. And she draws another foul on Ella McVeigh. We saw this early. De La Salle able to bait their defenders into fouls here. And more free throws coming for Keani Lockett. Uh, some of the fans coming up checking the fouls at the scores table trying to see what's going on well both teams in the double bonus and they're not posting them on the scoreboard here so it's hard for us to keep track but coach James Fassett Anoka coach right he was at Anoka for a while well he was on that team that won two games and went to state 
And that win was the spark plug, the springboard. And Oka made state for several years after that. They picked up a season opening win today over Grand Rapids under new coach Nick Novak. Gaber for three. Dowling Catholic cannot save it. Coach James Fassett, longtime friend, I've been known him a long time. He's a, obviously a gym rat, stays in the gym. Well, he's part of this Twin Cities tip off committee. Make sure everything runs smoothly. She's got to get to the basket. White has got to do way more. He's just hanging out here. 323 and counting. Oh, my God. White throws it right into McVeigh's hands. Ella. And, yeah, that looked like a foul there. I think that's Click's third, if not more. I like Click, though. She understands the game. She's going to work hard. She's not passive. And she had a year of varsity under her belt at Maranatha. But again, uh, the situation at Maranatha, as they went through a major transition, the family decided to make a change. They looked at a few schools and settled on De La Salle. Caitlin Clark missing the three-pointer. Oh. Oh Savannah White hesitated, and Dowling Catholic's in the score. Emma Gipple gets on the board off the De La Salle miscue. Runs away for three. Yes. That is the first three-pointer for De La Salle. And if they can get the outside game going, well, they're only trail by four, even though it seems like Dowling Catholic has controlled this one. You got to look to help here. She's going to go right. She favors that right. Stop and go. Uh. You called it. And Caitlin Clark delivers again. 19 points for the Iowa commit. A look at Keani Lockett go. Well, backs off. Keani Lockett, so shifty, she can move the floor really quickly. Goes for the runner, no good. White grabbed the ball. I don't understand her. She's well, just kind of White, yeah, out. she stood there. This kind of waiting for the ball than, to come um, to her. And instead, Dowling Catholic, now that's a big swing of momentum. Gaper with the third triple. You're right. White had the rebound. This is worse than uh, Carson last game, just standing around. Yeah, White had the rebound, didn't go for it, and Dowling Catholic swooped in. That leads to a three-pointer. I think White just assumed the ball was going to bounce to her. Now the Maroons want a foul. They don't get it. Yeah, White was a little lackadaisical on that play. I mean, just because the ball is bouncing to you, you, know, you got to go get it. Otherwise, someone else will. Clark. With just over a minute. Sizing up the defense. She's going to pull it. There she goes. Short that time. You got to attack. You got to attack. Runs away. Doesn't have the numbers. Oh, yeah, White in the post. Oh, turn and go. Here comes Savannah. Got it. She should be doing that every time down the floor. I don't get it. That's her first field goal. And it's she like needed she's that one. around waiting for something. 22 seconds. Long skip. Makes Simplot passed up on the three. Five seconds now. And a technical foul. So we've got a foul on Lockett and a technical. You know, that's, that's why I always say, Mike, 
If it's a three-man crew, you got to make sure those calls are fouled. You got to make sure those fouls are called. Because then that's when the fans start going nuts. He did the right thing. He administered the tech. And you can't go throwing bowls. So a foul was called on Lockett, the technical. And now you got some I of the uh, on, dialing parents yeah. up here turning red. <laughs> and I think, yeah, because I think the technical was called on Grace Gaber. So Dowling Catholic shooting their free throws, being well, in the double bonus. That's uh, Keanu. That's, I know her father. That's uh, Nate Lockett. <laughs> Nate used to play back in the day at Washburn. I know, I know late Nate Lockett. I've gotten to know Nate over the years, so personal foul on Keani Lockett, technical foul on Grace Gaber, so now Keani will shoot two free throws, and De La Salle will get the ball with 3.6 on the clock. And you know what? Even though De La Salle has struggled down low, they've hung around this game. If they can get some rhythm and finish inside, I'm not sure Dowling has the depth to hang with them. But you don't see that often. A foul and then a technical foul going the other way. Usually it's Well, three seconds one, left here. I want to see these punch. guys kind of execute. You got to execute. Three, now, three seconds to get to the basket. Oh, you got to go to the rack. You got all the speed. Go to the rack. What was that? Well, after a wild first half, 38-32 our score in favor of Dowling Catholic. 19 points for the Iowa commit, Caitlin Clark. Caitlin's good, uh, but I think uh, Dina Selk will turn up the pressure. Coach Denisha will make the necessary adjustments. I, See, she's talking know. to the rest right now. They got to be a little bit more cons consistent with their calls, been letting a lot of stuff ride. Uh, the shorter of the three refs, he, I don't think he's blown his whistle at all. Like I said, he... Uh, He's kind of old school. He like it, you know, kind of lets them play a little bit. Well, I agree with you there. De La Salle a little passive at times, but they only trail by six, so they could come back and win this one. We'll take a break and bring you the second half in a moment. This DSB television broadcast is supported by Banneker Realty, making dreams happen. Twin City Sports Broadcasting and a whole lot more. That's what you get from TSB Television. We provide long-lasting digital coverage of your favorite athletes from the preps to the pros. Dazzling moves. Holloman, good if it goes. Yes! Game winners. James. She's in trouble. Finds James. Toss shot! It goes in! And everything in between. Before we let you go, do you want to say hi to anybody? Oh, oh I don't know. That put me on the spot there. If you want to connect with our audience, Visit us at patreon.com slash TSB television or sponsor our coverage through PayPal and Cash App. Thank you for watching. Mike Peden and Emil Jihad will rejoin me shortly. All right, let's get ready for the second half of play. 38 31 our score. Dowling Catholic over De La Salle. Caitlin Clark, a one woman show. For the Maroons, 19 points. And for De La Salle, Keani Lockett with nine, Nerje Weens with seven. We had a crazy finish at the end, and I just got a new patron. A perfect time to let you know that if you'd like to support TSB Television Sports Programming, check us out at Patreon.com or PayPal and Cash App. Emil, we had a wild ending to that first half. Had a chance to catch up with the Hills, uh, Taylor and Monique, who are here. Taylor already is telling me, and Nerje Weems trapped. We'll call a timeout. Taylor Hill was telling me that Maurice, her son, in a few years will become the next big thing. I know PJ's got a daughter, and, and the Hill family, they're like the Suggs. <laughs> they just keep coming. They never end. She's still playing? Or Taylor? Nursing an injury still? I, yeah, they had to, she had, had some knee issues that they had to sort out. 
But I'm sure she'll be back at it. Dallas went through uh, some transitions with Brian Agler taking over as head coach. And then uh, don't forget Skylar Diggins-Smith missed most of the season because of a pregnancy for the birth of her uh, son. Back to action, De La Salle throwing it away after the turnover. You guys got a box out and rebound, De La Salle. Williams just picked up another one. That wasn't a smart foul. He just jumped in the air. And that's on Nerge. So free throws coming for Emma Gipple. Gipple missing both free throws. Dallin Catholic. Go to the basket. Pretty accurate. There you go. Click for three. Off the backboard. Oh, look out. Weems almost got hit with another foul there. And you've got a lot of players in foul trouble. It's been an aggressive game. That mishap happened right in front of Abe, but hopefully he's all over that. If Abe is on it, he is all over it. He's been doing this for years. He's the master at it. Just don't uh, ask him about 2016. Caitlin Clark, another layup, 21 points. Lockett gets a friendly bounce. And Keani Lockett up to 11 points. I did not know her father played at Washburn until you pointed yeah, it Nate, out. He's sitting right over here. Nate's a good guy. I got to talk to him afterwards. I had a chance to talk to him at the scrimmage. Works at Banneker Realty. We were gracious enough to provide a sponsorship. Maya Williams going up on Twong. And I think Twong was in move. Twong now may I have been get hit in Maya the face. going and she can run up and down the floor and participate. That'd be good. I She's think, just got to yeah. focus. Or maybe run her two, three minutes first and get her out of there if she's not going to play hard. Clark. This girl can shoot. Clark. Oh. So, so it looks like the officials have made their adjustment too. They go back and uh, just like they do their pregame, I'm sure they're doing a halftime talk and uh, trying to critique their games. Oh, Tanisha Scott <laughs> making her request known. Tanisha, a highly oh, vocal coach. Whoa! Williams Whoa. almost got Whoa. the finish there. Dina South is going crazy here. That would have been a oh, highlight. She got corralled there. That's a good move, though. The sophomore, Maya Williams, a little bit more active. Oh, White, you got to go get that. You got to get around in the post. Bowls at one. The officials have definitely had a halftime talk, and they're going to tighten things up. That's my buddy. Baseline buddy. He's called two consecutive calls this half, Mike. So we are seeing a whole new uh, three-man crew here. Bulls missing the three-point play. But the Maroons up by seven. Williams, spin move. Nothing doing. Clark, step back. We gotta push that. Come on. Oh, White just walking up the floor. That's not good. Runs away with the rebound. You guys Clark. gotta know she's coming to the basket. Whoa, and Clark and Williams get tangled up there. 
And as Clark heads to the line, we'd like to let you know that this broadcast is supported by Banneker Realty, making dreams happen. And Izzy Ice Cream. <laughs> Uh, Izzy's, don't I don't forget about Izzy ice cream. Mike. I don't have the sponsorship. I don't have the sponsorship yet. Okay, but unofficial. If, uh, but unofficial if, if they sponsor. want, if they want to, if they want to chip in, I'd be happy to have them. <laughs> Who doesn't like ice cream? All right, Izzy's, the taste of victory. <laughs> victory. <laughs> We're giving them free plugs, aren't we? They're the ice cream shop near St. Thomas. You never know; the owner could be tuning in. <laughs> That's true. Oh, we'll wait and see what happens. We'll put it out there. We're fishing right now. Izzy's ice cream. Clark up to 22. Uh, she split at the line. Dowling Catholic struggling a little bit here in the second half, but they do have an eight-point lead. That's a nice play. We run that set. Step Lock back. Lock it. Step back. Swish. Lock it. Made some space for herself there. Five-point game. You still haven't got Clark under control because she's coming right back. I guarantee it. Whoa. Well, she's like Paige Beckers. You can't stop her. You run, can only run, hope the container. Come on. This is the part that disheartens me, Mike. You got three De La Salle girls walking up the floor in transition. Yeah, I didn't have the numbers uh, there. Yeah, but White's so much of an athlete, she could beat everybody down the floor. Lockett goes for it. No good. Williams leaves it can't short. Can't just stand around and just waiting on. And look at this. Lockett is the only one battling for the rebound. You got to have everybody going in. And I understand some coaches teach one get back, everybody else attack. I understand that, but there's too much standing around. You're down five here. I mean, you got to have that riverboat mentality, gambler's mentality, you know. You got to let it hang out. And with this timeout, I know I plugged them a couple minutes ago, but I'll do it again. This broadcast is supported by Banneker Realty, making dreams happen. BannekerRealty.com. And they have offered their support for our De La Salle broadcast. We're happy to have them on board. And if you'd like to do the same, we've got three ways for you to do so. Patreon.com slash TSB Television, PayPal.me slash TSB Television, or Cash App TSB Television. A lot of ways for you to contribute. Every contribution goes to our game coverage. And Mia, from what I've gathered here, I think you'd like to see De La Salle attack a little more. But you know, they're hanging around. If they can get on a run, that's been missing here. Keani Lockett's had some nice plays. She has 14 points, but De La Salle feels like they're on the cusp. They just can't push the way through. And this would be a situation where you'd love to have Nora Francois. But again, she's working through you know, her obstacles at her own pace. And for this De La Salle Islander team, I guess this game, when you face against, when you face an athlete like Kat, Caitlin Clark, this game is a glimpse of the season to come. You know, their non-conference schedule includes St. Michael Albertville, Hopkins, Mankato West. And then you've got Holy Angels and an up-and-coming St. Croix Lutheran team in the Tri-Metro. De La Salle will also host Grand Rapids in December. So a lot of opportunities for this Islander team to tune themselves up. And as we said before, this is a team that gets better as the season moves along. Three on the way. Nothing called there. 13-24 left. In the second half, 43-38. Full day of basketball here at Shonaker Arena. And an offensive foul is called. Illegal screen in Dowling. Been sitting on the score for a while here. 38, 43 with 13 and some change here. That's Brianna Rodriguez, number 13. Why would she say that? You don't need to say that, just leave it.
Lockett setting it up. Looking for the flare. White. Forty-three, thirty-eight. We've been stuck at that score for a little while. Ricky Hill having a little fun with you, Emil. Ricky. Ricky Hill used to be on the coaching staff at D last year, right. so he knows he the personnel. The he knows I, I talked with him at halftime and just before tip-off, and he has high expectations for these kids too as well. He knows the personnel very well. Ricky Hill moving over to Minneapolis South this year as they try to rebuild that program. They've won the Twins uh, Minneapolis City Conference the last several years, but they don't have the numbers that they used to, hoping to build that back up. They still have a couple of Hill sisters, though, in Jade and Angel. And Angel getting significant time as a seventh grader last year. Caitlin Clark, mid-range day is good. She's got a strange pull-up, but it goes in. She can definitely shoot. Lock it. She did the right thing, attack Clark. You guys don't get back on defense. They're not running hard. It's going to Clark. You better best believe that. Got to look to play help on her. Oh, Clark, nice pass. Skip. And, and let, letting them play Thomas. down there. Let Thomas. Let them play. Letting them play. And how about the defense by Thomas? Isabella Thomas denying Dowling Catholic a bucket down low. Like we said, if they could get on a run. Side Run fade. Sui. Runs way, drains the three. Her second triple, and it's a four-point game. And Sydney's getting into it now, but De La Salle defense has got to play a little bit better. Savannah White with the rejection. I believe that's her second block officially. It's kind of interesting. Mike Dowling's going with uh, doing a little small ball here. Both posts. Well, she's coming back now with, uh, what is it, Twing? Twang and Bowles. Twangin? Well, I know they dealt with early foul trouble. And Twong went out with the, uh, got popped in the jaw or eye or something. She went out with a slight injury. And she's back in. Two more substitutions coming in for Dowling. A lot of Four subs. point lead. And De La Salle has uh, got a little momentum here, Mike. Screen the screener. Got to watch Clark. It always goes back to Clark. Oh, whoa. Caitlin Clark for three. No good. And the rebound going to Thomas. Oh. Got to be careful. Lack of physical pass. Clark in transition. Always dangerous. And one. She's a tough player. Well, you want to know how tough she is? She was the Gatorade Player of the Year for Iowa and a member of the U19 USA team that won the gold medal alongside Paige Beckers at the FIBA World Championships. That doesn't tell you how tough Caitlin Clark is. I'm not sure what will. And I'm glad that the Twin Cities tip-off allows us to see players like Caitlin Clark, to see players outside the state who will hear about in college. Runsway, pump fake, swish. See, that's what I like to see. Kids understand the moment and know what you need for your team. And it looks like she's trying to step up a little bit. Now, if we can just get some D on Clark, nobody's been able to stop her. Three ball, in and out. Islanders get the it's stop. It's going to be the role players that are going to have to step up, like, like White. She's got to keep going here. She's got to look players. to do something. I'm not sure you have role players, per se, at De La Salle. Weems having to deal with foul trouble, missing the mid-range J. Everybody's got to step up and do something, Mike. No free ice cream here. 
You really like that phrase, no free I, ice cream. I really do. What would happen I got a if few you more in my pocket here too? I, I know, but what would happen if you got an ice cream endorsement? Well, what I would happen you, to the no free ice cream? It's going to be a tough one because <laughs> I only like uh, Hagen Oz. Okay. Hagen Oz and Breyers. That's okay. it. Those are my two favorites. I, I got a few. Uh, I, I got a few. I hit up. And I'll try. And I'll try. Oh, this the, is the matchup I've been waiting for right here. Clark oh, and White, White, come on. Twan. Oh. That's a walk. And Caitlin Clark. It's a tough call. Yeah, she thought and it was I like the how she way. bounced up and just sprinted down the floor. She didn't complain. That's what I like to see. When I go on scout teams, that's what I look for. You know, see if they're going to whine about everything, how they react to the bench, oh. that whole bench decorum. Well, that makes sense. It makes I a lot of sense. I look for that stuff immediately. Right. So if that kid becomes unglued the first two minutes of the game, oh, that's, that's a another lock. travel. It's an easy call. Weems' head is somewhere else right now. She's not playing her game. I think she's worried about the fouls. But what you say makes a lot of sense. If you're scouting and you see a player that gets a little Frazzled. frenetic, right, yeah. gets a little frayed, you know, that's a player you're going to go after. Try to get them out of their groove. Three on the way. Bullseye. Grace that's Faber. dangerous because a kid like that, again, the role players, and I know kids are doing what the coaches are asking them to do, but, oh, nice move. That's what nice move. De La Salle's looking for. And that's like the Weens we know. I want to see White step up and do something. See Royce down there coaching baseline. He's working the defensive angle. Oh, nice help. Clark with the behind the back pass. Dowling swings it around. That will be a kickball. Kick. That's better defense. Anticipation, Mike. That's what I'm waiting on. d sales got to roll up the sleeves and kind of get dirty a little bit, or either they're going home with the L. I'm telling you right now. Aiden, some change. You're going to have to mix it up. Gamble. Get it out of her hands. Somebody's got to run in there. It's a loss that wouldn't necessarily hurt De La Salle coming yeah. against an Iowa team, but now you want to get that win to start the season. Oh Clark behind the back, and Twong wasn't ready. And that's twice. He, right. She's tried that now. And well, once. Talking about last game with uh, Dornoski. She tried it. Yeah, she tried that. And behind but, the back passes. You know, but that, she was wide that open. I don't think that kid's on that level. Though. Well, and that's She the, works hard. They took her out. I saw that with. You go back with the other big here. I saw that last year in Avant and Sayek in Cordy Academy. She was a step above everyone else on the floor. And she's making moves. Her teammates weren't anticipating it. Lockett missing the runner. So Clark, great ball handling, but. Oh, my goodness. And there she goes again. 29 points for Caitlin Clark. Attacking with impunity. She can't be stopped. Weems for three. I'm not sure that's what you want out of her. White, you got to grab that. Now, this Clark, is key. bounce past the Bulls. Yes. She's making everybody a better player now. It's getting out of control. Much like Paige Beckers does at Hopkins. Up 10 and 7 and some change. And Clark and Beckers, they had a lot of time to get to know each other. And USA ball, 7.33 to go. And Clark, you know, it's one thing to have talent. It's another to use that talent to make everyone else better. And that's what Caitlin Clark is doing. You can't take anything away from her. Uh, Clark is definitely a Division I talent. She's not uh, afraid. She doesn't hesitate on any of her moves. Sets the table, makes sure everybody eats. Uh, she's doing a nice job. She's playing within herself. She's not going to overdo it. Um, she doesn't get too rattled. You know, some kids kind of get kind of, you know, kind of out there, get a little frazzled. And again, I'll, I'll speak on that again. When I go on scout teams, that's the first thing I look for, you know, especially on timeouts. I mean, are they paying attention? Are they kind of just doing their own deal? Those are the kids that we try and attack, you know, in terms of getting them off the floor or, or, or isolating those type of kids, you know, going at them. Those are the things that I look at and make special note of those, put an asterisk right by their name. So it'll be interesting here going down the stretch. I give it like right around four or five minute mark and I want to see who steps up and who disappears. Now the post kid for Dowling, 55, big kid, she hasn't played a lot. But I'm, I'm hoping that she's going to be an X-factor and kind of control the glass and then uh, 
get a lot of those garbage buckets down low. So she's going to be one to watch. And then it um, sounds like De La Salle is going to ride Weems a little bit. But, I, again, I'm waiting on White to step up and do something. I don't know her role, but she's got to do something, rebound or something. We've been talking a lot about Caitlin Clark. There is another, uh, I think, D1 or D2 commit in Tuong, number 45, going to St. Louis University. I believe it's D1, and there's Caitlin Clark again. Brianna Rodriguez for Dowling Catholic what will play 50, softball. 55, you said he's going to wear a drape? 45. No, 55. Uh, 55, that's, uh, you're thinking Becker of Aquinas. Yeah, 55. No, no, big girl for uh, Yeah, she doesn't have a. Okay. It doesn't show up in my notes. I, I thought 45, so 45 is going to St. Louis. Wow, Twang. she comes off the bench. Okay. And Brianna Rodriguez will go to Brown University to play D1 softball. Ella McVeigh has verbaled to Michigan to play softball. McVeigh number one. So we've got some multi-sport athletes here at Dowling Catholic. Caitlin Clark splits at the line, but the Maroons in control of this one. Clark with 30 points. Oh, he hit. Weems. Oh, my God. Uh, Weems struggling. A lot of bunnies. And that's the difference in this game. De La Salle missing a bunch of baskets down low. Clark. Rebound oh, McVeigh. That three looked off, and it is. Does run. De La Salle have another run in them? These guys are not in shape at all. White, high low to Salam. Another, another miss, miss down low. Three. These bunnies are killing us in layups. And here comes Clark. Clark to Bowles, 15-footer. Does not drop, but right now, Dowling has all the control. De La Salle, they can't finish down low with efficiency. I like number one's energy, though. I think that's a little uh, brown. Can be one going to Michigan. A verbal to Michigan for softball. Yeah, she's tough. Ella McVeigh. She's tough. You got to have a kid like that. This is going to be committed to playing D. Oh, nice, Hezzy. Oh. I thought Lockett was going to go after it. After the foul, there was an incident between Nerje Weems and Lexi Bowles. We now move ahead a few minutes in the broadcast. Still waiting for an official ruling. I've got a feeling Bowles will be ejected, and Weems, from the looks of it, you know, she's headed back to the locker room, so... That would lead me to believe that she's been ejected. That's tough. We were talking well, it's about good Weems. That management is over here. Uh, Coach Fassett is over there taking control. Yes, we've got two ejections. So Bulls and Weems. Both ejected. Those fouls will offset. And Runsway will have to shoot the free throws in place of Weems after Gaber fouled Weems. So that wasn't a shooting foul. It's one and one. But it's, it's uh, just good to see cooler right. heads kind of, you know, yeah. taking. Uh oh, we got one of the dudes' well, parents going over there, sit behind the scores table now. Uh, she was just sitting sure, in front of us. Right. No, that that's. You don't want this to escalate. Let's get through these last five minutes and 53 seconds. I'm not sure what happened. Keani Lockett makes the two-pointer. Well, does De La Salle have another run? They'll have to do it without Nerje Weems and Dowling Catholic. They're without their post player. Well, now they go back to being bench cheerleaders and a foul on Salam. That will send Caitlin Clark to the line. Well, Emil, I imagine you work through situations like this, not necessarily over what happened, but when you have a player go out of the game, how do you handle this? De La Salle and you got to talk your kids through these type of right. situations. You got to know. For a long time, we worked with uh, Taisha Smith on these type of issues. Oh, Taisha. Taisha she, was, was a, she was fun. She was, <laughs> <laughs> she was a quick. She was the smallest player on the floor most of the time. But yeah. Taisha Smith, up with one speed. of my favorite players in women's basketball. I think she played at UNI. Yeah. 
D, uh, D1 uh, JUCO All-American, uh, All-State player in Minneapolis out of Minnesota. Uh, she was a one-man press, boy, I tell you. Caitlin Clark making both free throws, but you gotta, now if you're the coaches here, yeah, what do you tell your team knowing that? Well, you want to stay aggressive. They, right. And, uh, you know, uh, your starting post players, your starting fives are yeah. both out. See, uh, Miss Weems down here is pretty upset. She's already put her coat on. You know, she's really kind of bothered. Oh, another bad pass. De La Salle just can't. Their passing is off. Timing is off. You got to get up on her. Simple Caitlin crossover. Clark, the dish to Twang. Yes. Salam, four and a half to go. It looks like Dallin Catholic will play their first full game with a oh win. Oh, my God. They've had a strange week. You, know, you had that situation that happened a few minutes ago, and then on Tuesday, their game, their season opener was suspended because of a power outage. Mm. So, Coming back not up. your typical start. Caitlin Clark pulls up. Oh, my God. Nobody rebounding for De La Salle. You, Dallin Catholic, you can tell they've got all the momentum right now. They're getting after it. De La Salle a little off step at times. You know they'll get better as the season goes along, but there are some moments, like you said, where I don't know if they were assertive enough. Got to play hell, White. Caitlin Clark squeezes through the hole and will shoot two. What more can you say about Caitlin Clark? Crafty. <laughs> Very crafty. It's not going to hurt her team. She knows what she's doing. She's rock solid. 3.41 to go. Timeout. See Paul Hill Dallin standing Catholic. up. Uh, Paul Hill. Up top over there. Yeah, he, Paul Hill. Uh, Paul likes to uh, kind of coach from the sidelines, so I'm sure he's barking out some signals there. <laughs> You know, he goes to a lot of games. Crystal Flint, another one. You know, she had a game earlier today with Creighton Durham Hall, but likes to hang around, highly supportive of the state. You know, she and Tanisha Scott are close friends. Tanisha, one of her protégés. And Crystal, well. I like the fact that Crystal uh, just jumped right in and got involved. She didn't want to see anything right. bad and happen. She's had to I, I think that. That, that, that counts in my book, Mike, in terms of... Uh, uh, integrity. Uh, you know, coaches want to see things happen correctly. Uh, this event that's being put on, she wants to see it ran well, and she doesn't want to see it have a black eye or anything bad happen. So she did the right thing by, by stepping in and trying to s separate some of those parents and, and cool some of those heads. So it was good to see Crystal and uh, Coach Sin step right in and kind of help de-escalate what was going on over there. And Crystal so, Flint, she's been in the flesh in situations like this. She was an official for many years and a yeah. coach at Minnesota Concordia. She's seen a lot of these scenarios play out. And like you said, when you have a situation that could snowball, you've got folks like Crystal Ruth. They are longtime veterans. Yeah. They don't get rattled easily. They'll get in very, there. Very, very happy right. to see her step in. They, they'll, very they, happy. They will make sure things don't get out of hand. Okay. As I was saying earlier today when I covered the Creighton Durham Hall Holy Angels game, she doesn't take any nonsense from her players. You know, she wants to promote the game and do it the right way. And you know, props to her, Ruth, and just props to everyone who intervened and made sure that situation didn't get any worse. Yes. Caitlin Clark making both free throws. You know, most of the time when one player has more than half of your scoring, that doesn't always work out for your team, but it is for Dowling Catholic as Savannah White fires the three and misfires. De La Salle gets the save. Maya Williams goes up, drains the runner. Now you got to work hard here. I would press. I wouldn't wait and gamble. Here. And Caitlin Clark, 34 points. Picking up a lot at the line. The Iowa version of Paige Beckers. 
You got to have Keani on her. I don't know if uh, this kid can guard her. Kennedy click. You've got freshman against senior. And, mm -hmm. and we, well, Iowa, we go. I should point out, Iowa, they still play quarters. So this is the extra four minutes that they're not used to. Although Dowling Catholic, Going being with a the, uh, regular visitor here, they're Dean used to Smith, it. Dean Smith, four-corner spread. I wasn't around for the Dean Smith era, unfortunately. Uh, I, I know of, a couple of players of who YouTube had videos out there, Mike. Oh, I know there is. Plenty of them. And I know a couple of <laughs> players who uh, prospered, Michael Jordan and uh, James Worthy. Yeah, that, that's, uh, I think ESPN did a piece on uh, North Carolina history, basketball, and so forth. It's a very, very well done documentary. And uh, they spent, I want to say, at least a good portion, maybe 15 minutes of that three hour document, uh, documentary talking about the, five, the four corner uh, spread, you know, and how they controlled teams with it. It was just unbelievable. And something that impressed me, because I read up about him. I forget what year it was, but there was one game where he took a technical foul because it was senior day and his North Carolina team had six seniors. He didn't want to leave one on the bench, so he put all six on the floor and took the bench technical, of course, because you can't have more than five. But a classy move to ensure all of his seniors got recognition. Some things are more important than a tech in that instance. So Dean Smith. A legend. Caitlin Clark off the inbound. Missed that inbound play, but well, Caitlin got, Clark took it. About, and what, about 36 now? 36, you're right. Caitlin Clark took that pass and went warp speed to the bucket. That's what happened. 36. Maya Williams picks her pocket. Now, if Maya could play, figure out how to play hard the whole game like that, would be good. Uh, even if De La Salle doesn't get the win, Maya Williams will have a story. I got to pick the pocket of Caitlin Clark and score. Williams with seven. De La Salle's gonna come up a little bit short. Still down 12. And an offensive foul on Caitlin Clark. Laughing it off, having a quick word with the official. Doesn't look to be an interesting call. too upset about it. Well, this is a chance for De La Salle. If they have anything left, this will be the time. Lock it, runner, good. Keani Lockett with 17 to lead the Islanders. Can they get a stop? Great passing. You gotta deny Clark. Come on, you gotta get up and play defense, De La Salle. There it is. Go Williams to the basket. The Goes up and scores. You gotta, can't celebrate here, Mike. You're under a minute and Myers guarding nobody. And you're down by eight. Click will be called for the foul. That will send Caitlin Clark to the line, not the player you want to send to the stripe. Down eight points and you're celebrating. I can't believe this. Maya, you got to guard somebody, Maya. Oh, there's our friend Clayton. Been looking for him. Clayton leaving the building, getting a hug from, uh, is that uh, Mary? Click is fouled out of the game, I can tell you that much. Caitlin Clark, 37 points in her first full game. Oh, it looks like, yeah, yeah, they're Clayton and Savannah catching up with the Francois sisters. Mary Claire, a member of that state championship team. Yeah, I tell you what, if Mary Claire was on the floor, it'd be a different game. Well, she can't be anymore. She graduated. Lockett scores again, but I don't know if De La Salle has enough time. Now De La Salle found some momentum here, but a little too late. And now Lockett fouls Clark. Caitlin with a chance to get to 40. She's awesome. You can't take that from her, Mike. It's rock solid. 
all the uh, different things that have been happening tonight. She's been very consistent with her effort. Last year, 17 and eight, the Dowling Catholic team reached the semifinals in class 5A in Iowa at the state tournament. Clark? You say 5A, huh? 5A. I don't know how many classes there are in Iowa, but it doesn't surprise me that Dowling Catholic is a fixture at state. 20 seconds left, Dowling up by nine, that should do it. Caitlin Clark, 39 points, a one-woman show, and the outlet pass to Ella McVeigh, the Michigan softball it. commit. Dowling just had a little more in their step. De La Salle struggled down low, but bright futures are ahead for both teams. Dowling Catholic, 69-58, 39 points from Caitlin Clark, 39. That's impressive. De La Salle, not the season opener they wanted, but a long way to go. We know they'll be a competitor throughout the year, and Dowling Catholic, it's a treat for us to witness Caitlin Clark before she goes off to Iowa. And once again, you have to be grateful and appreciative that St. Thomas and this tournament allows them to showcase their abilities here in Minnesota. De La Salle, they had their opportunities, couldn't finish down low enough. Dowling Catholic wins their official season opener, 69-58. De La Salle will try again to get their first one of the year against Lacrosse Aquinas. Final thoughts, Emil? Um, still young, early in the season. Um, you know, a lot of stuff going on here in terms of different strategies. Um, you know, so I'm sure, you know, Coach Scott will have an opportunity to go back and fix some things. Um, so it, it'll, it'll work itself out. It'll work itself out, but props to Caitlin Clark and the Dowling Catholic Maroons. Big win for Dowling Catholic. De La Salle, plenty of wins will come. And that wraps it up here. Four games and all entertaining ones tonight. Glad you could be with us, Emil, for this showcase event. Mike, and it's always a pleasure. I can't wait to have you again on Tuesday. One of That'll my favorite be a lot of announcers, fun. Mike P. <laughs> Thanks. And that's not Mike P. of the uh, of the Beastie Boys. No. And yeah. Tuesday we're back at it again. Creighton Durham Hall, North St. Paul. That'll be a lot of fun. Oh yeah. All right. I can't wait for that one. Neither can I. Well, let's wrap it up from Shawnee Arena at St. Thomas for Emil Jihad and the rest of our crew. I'm Mike Beaton. Thanks for watching.